Well, good afternoon, everyone. And it's great to see so many join the call today. Um, uh, most of you are agency owners, agencies leaders, and it's great to be hosting this webinar about the RCG Benchmark Study 2021. First up, I want to wish you well. I hope you're doing okay wherever you are, in whatever markets you are. If you're in lockdown, as I know some of us are, um, it's certainly not not easy. And and someone described it to me actually. It's a bit like a guy that 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 I, that has run call centres for many years. He says the big challenge with call centres is every day you're in the same environment, looking at the same screen, and generally speaking, dealing with grumpy people all day. And 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 that's what it is for us. I think in COVID, it's it, it is getting like that. So take care, and and I hope you're all coping. Uh, in, in the situation. There is hope and there is optimism. I was watching a football game from Newcastle, England the other morning with my son, 46,000 people in a stadium holding 40,000. And I said to him, he's in year 12 and having a very tough time as are his cohort. There is hope we can get there and it's going to get back to a new normal that's gonna be okay. So please, if you are able to get vaccinated and spread the word, um, get vaccinated if you can, and let's get back to work, get back to the life we all value so much. Now, it, we're coming up, this is the 20th year of the benchmark study that the, uh, the Registered Consultancy Group does every year. And um, in, in my uh, uh, first few months as chairman of the RCG, in working with Shane Allison, the treasurer of the PRIA, who's on our call today and will be co-hosting with me and talking to Maddie, one of the stalwarts at the PRIA, who's coordinating today's call. We talked about the feedback that some aspects of the benchmark study were just not as relevant and as valuable as they had been in the past. Also, that the study itself was just too complicated. It took ages to fill in. And that was preventing lots of agencies that were prepared to participate. But when they looked at the study, they said, hey, I have to, you know, I have to have a lie down and a cup of tea after having done this uh, survey. It's just too onerous. So please, RCG, have a look at the benchmark study. Think about the way our industry has changed. Think about what the bigger agencies need, the medium-sized agencies, the smaller agencies. Recalibrate and come up with a new benchmark study that is genuinely sharp and practical for what we, we need in our businesses today. And that is what we've done. Obviously, when you recalibrate a benchmark study, you lose the benchmarks. However, in the way that we're approaching our first new set of questions and areas of inquiry, we will have a benchmark and then obviously build on it now for the future, something more valid and more, more valuable for you. So we're delighted today to share with you on the next slide, the, 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 the outline of what this new survey is going to be all about. The 10 key benchmarks for PR agency performance. We believe that these are the right benchmarks, but we're very much looking forward for your input, your feedback today. Uh, with any questions you want to ask online, uh, and and also uh, 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 if we if we open it up for live questions later on, but online I think would be would be best. You can see that there's a chat, there's a uh, um, uh, a chat function. Um, look, some cheeky member of the RCGs just said to me that they think that Newcastle won that football game on Monday morning. No, they didn't. Uh, the team from London won. Anyway, that's an aside. Delivering actionable insights, that's what it all is all about. Now, you know, in the existing benchmark study, there are 85 questions that have to be answered. No wonder people find it onerous. And through the good work of RCG leaders and others, other agency leaders that have collaborated to try and come up with these new benchmarks, we've got that 85 down to 30. So it's come down by almost two thirds and that's a terrific start, but it's only terrific if the, the areas of investigation are relevant, are valid, are important to you and are genuinely actionable that you can, you know, with the, with the levers of your business, you can take this benchmark study, take the insights it provides and then calibrate back or calibrate up on the different levers that you're using to run sustainable and profitable 
PR firms, communications agencies, whether you've got three people or whether you've got 103 people, is it relevant to you? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through each of the 10 benchmarks and just touch on what each covers. I'm going to talk about uh, a, a bit more detail around a couple of aspects of that. I'll cover the timing of how we're going to roll out this, this new study and get it done as quickly as possible so that the information is still relevant and accurate and not too historical. Uh, talk about format, and then I'll hand over to Shane, who's going to take us through some other details. Mel from our research partners, Lonergan, unfortunately, is not well today. She won't be joining us, but Shane's going to take us through the slides that Mel was going to take us through. So let's have a look at the benchmarks then, if we can go through the next slide. The first set of questions is about agency profitability. Now, if we can encourage more and more agencies to complete the survey, we will be able to provide uh, uh, different areas of, of, of the industry with, with benchmark information for their sector. So agencies of a certain headcount or a certain revenue level will be able to band and say, this is the profitability being achieved in that area in that size of comparable businesses and the medium size and bigger agencies likewise these are the sort of margins that eight to ten of your peers are achieving and and this is how you compare as well as overall out of the people that respond i have to say that for the rgc we've had i think a record a sign up of renewals of of members we've had a a a, a large group of dormant uh, members re-sign. So we're getting a bigger and bigger group signing up to the RCG, which hopefully means we'll get a bigger and bigger cohort happy to do the 30 questions rather than the 85 in this year's survey. So agency profitability, we're going to benchmark agency profitability by size of agency, as well as expenditure on key items. We're going to look at how much money spent on compensation. And by compensation, we talk about superannuation. I think we look at other aspects that make up compensation. And then we're also going to look at, well, how much money is being spent on rent, on technology, on marketing, on new business, and on other key aspects of profitability, okay? And, and one of the, one, one of the, the, the key uh, measures for me as a benchmark I use in my businesses, and, and I'm sure you use it too, is compensation to revenue. I like to say 65% is the benchmark for me. If you've got your compensation lower than 65%, hopefully lower than 60%, you should have a, a really, really good profitable business, right? Um, so that's just one benchmark, but agency profitability, we're going to share, we're going to be able to, through our research and the questions that have been developed, give you some terrific benchmarks around profitability. Number two, staff utilization establishing new benchmarks about how much revenue staff in your agency should be billing and utilization percentages. And we're going to go through the sort of categories of title that we're going to look at, you know, a managing director, how much of their time should generally be billable, and what's the case within smaller agencies and bigger agencies, down to a junior consultant, what sort of percentage. Utilization is one thing realized billability is a more important number. I know when I ran agencies and I've got agencies that I'm chairman of today, they'll say to me, oh, you know, we're, 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 we're 80, we're 95% billable because people on their timesheets are putting 95% of their time against clients. But how much of that time is actually being billed to the client? Realized billability is your true measure of productivity. And effectiveness. And if you're spending time that's not being charged on clients, you need to know what that time's being spent on. Is it over servicing or is it on admin issues that we new business and stuff like that? Staff utilization will be looking at those metrics and providing with you, you with best practice information around what peer-like agencies are doing in this regard. In number three, we're going to be looking at cost of service. Now, this is an unusual metric. It's not one that I have used regularly, 
But when it was shared with me as part of this presentation, I thought that's useful. My brother's a big guy in the recruitment industry and he talks about cost of seat that every person you hire, it's not just their compensation and benefits and, 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 and superannuation and long service leave provisions that you've got to calculate, but how much does it cost to get them a computer, give them a seat to sit at in days that we could sit in the office and all the other, to have um, uh, non-billable admin staff, what is the cost of seat, the cost of service per person, per level, in your industry and, and, and in your sector. And we're gonna be providing that as a, because then you know, if I add so-and-so, they're gonna cost me 70 grand, but the cost of seats actually a hundred, I have to make $101 before that person's profitable. That's your cost of seat or cost of service. Then we're going to look at number four, which is around revenue. Um, how much recurring revenue in your business should you have? How many clients should you retain? This is very interesting depending on size of agency, but also if you have an area of specialization. I have some businesses I'm involved in where literally four months ahead, they, they can only see where five, 10% of their revenue is coming from. The other 80, 90% is all project, it's sold in real time, it's sold a month out. And as you get closer to that month, you start getting more idea of where the revenue is coming from. But other agencies have much more clarity around where their revenue is coming from. I like to think that Nirvana for me is if three, four months out, I know where 60% of my revenue is coming from, I can sleep easy. And then obviously through our upselling, through our, our proactivity, our creativity, our chutzpah, our, our, our new business and all those things, we're filling the pipe on the other 40%. But all agencies are different. We're going to give you some benchmarks at agencies of different sizes. What do they like to think going into a year? How much identified? How much blue sky new business. And obviously when you think about identified new business, to me, there's always three categories. There is the, the, the revenue that is identified. There's a revenue that, say on a client, um, a Guava Inc, you've had a relationship then with two years, you look at the year ahead, you say, I know I'm going to get $10. Then I've got highly likely. It's highly likely given history and history is our friend that we're gonna get $5. So now I've got 15. And then there's possible. It's possible we could get another five. So now I've got $20 as a forecast for that client. We want to be conservatively aggressive. So I might put in my forecast $17, but I know for sure I'm gonna get 10 unless something dramatic happens. So I've got 10 out of 17 identified, seven out of 17 is highly likely and possible, but that to me is the number I put into my forecast. So we're gonna give you some benchmarks around that as well as some tips on how to look at it. Number five, salaries. Holy gamoli. I don't know what it is for you. I, I've got uh, visibility into agencies that are creative agencies, digital agencies, PR firms, uh, media agencies. There's never been more pressure on salaries. There's never been more pressure on talent because all those uh, uh, English, uh, generally Englishmen, with five to seven years experience on landing here for their three years in the sun, we've got this dearth, is that the right word? Uh, um, absence of talent at that level, particularly five to seven years of experience in our industry. And, and salaries have gone through the roof. I'm hearing of 30 to 35% salary uh, uh, explosion in Sydney and Melbourne. I'm not sure about the other states but that's what we're seeing in Sydney and Melbourne. One guy rang me yesterday. He said, he's got a person on $105,000 and they've just been offered 155,000 for the same job in another company. And they're not worth 155,000, they're worth 105. And the other thing that's happening with the salary uh, uh, explosion, of course, for most of us, we're not even getting paid the right amount by our existing clients. We haven't reviewed our fees for three years. So the margins in our industry generally are getting squeezed as salaries are rising and we're not asking our clients for more money. So we have to really work on retention and keeping people with us through other ways and having the courage to start going to clients and start getting an increase 
in what we're getting paid. Ooh, that's scary, right? One of the things we're going to be doing at the RCG is getting out there in the market and starting to try and help educate clients that agencies are under pressure and they can expect to see an increase in fees and rates. And that's something they need to understand is just vital to keep our, our, our industry viable and relevant and being able to retain. We're going to be sharing with you benchmarks around salaries being paid at certain levels, the sort of increases that are coming in at those, at, at those levels, vital information at this time. I know it is tough. Going to number six, pricing models. We're going to be providing you some benchmarking around how people are pricing and the way they're structuring remuneration with their clients in terms of project fees, in terms of retainer-based revenue. Sometimes they are they doing success fees, how much of revenue come through success fees. Sometimes people talk to me about value pricing and I have to say to them, People have been talking, I've been talking about value pricing for 35 years, but I think there's only once in my career I was able to do it. That means where you do five hours of work that on an hourly rate basis would be worth $2,000. But because of the value you provided, you send the client a bill for $50,000, right? Oh, Nirvana, doesn't happen very often. Every now and then you might be able to get away with it, but there are ways we can price differently. And agencies are pricing differently with clients, and we're going to share some benchmarks with you around that. Hourly rates, benchmarking hourly rates by role, and, 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 and importantly here, we need to be able to show you what the hourly rates are uh, in the different cities. I think obviously hourly rates in Sydney and Melbourne might be higher to hourly rates in some of the other cities uh, for certain services. And we're going to try and be as specific we, as we can in benchmarking around hourly rates. Then retention, talking about staff again. Um, this is about retaining staff at different levels. What sort of rates are, are companies experiencing? We are in the, um, the, the, the phase of history that I've see it, seen it termed as the great resignation right? And uh, in the agency, I speak to a lot of agencies every week, um, I'm, some of them which I'm involved in, some of which I'm just mates with. And generally speaking, they have been inundated with people resigning. At the same time, they've been pretty good at poaching people from competitors because they're also getting the great resignation. The problem is salaries, salaries are going up, but there is a great resignation underway because people are bored. They, they stagnate. They're not going on holidays. They're not getting that two weeks in Bali. They're not going to Vegas. They're not. And so they want, they're not going skiing or whatever people do on holidays. So a change is as good as a holiday. So they're taking, in some cases, I think, shittier jobs in, 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 a, in, in not as good agencies just to get a change. So we've got to work on retention. It's going to calm down and we're going to have to work on our retention strategies. We will be getting key data from this benchmark study about retention rates at different levels that can tell you how you're doing in your business. And finally, obviously something cash is king and queen, uh, obviously in our businesses. And, and it's really only in recent years, I've come to realize frankly, how critical cash is because often in my corporate life, the cash was being provided by a, by a bigger entity. I didn't think about it that much. Now in the last decade where the cash has generally been provided by my wife in most cases uh, to help fund our, our ventures together, um, you know, by our own, you know, we're funding ourselves. Cash is so, so important. Day to days, what are the averages? What are the averages uh, for different size agencies? How do we compare in getting paid? And is that, are those day to, day, day to days exploding out or are they narrowing? And what can we do about it? So those are the 10 uh, benchmarks that we're going to use. I've shared with you before that I find in Sydney and Melbourne, I love using the one metric that I found so, so good. And that is revenue per head of full-time employee. Whatever your full-time employees are, even if you've got three uh, uh, potato peelers and one person running the car park, whatever your full-time employees are, $200,000 per head. Now, in different cities, that might be different. It might be 120000 because your costs are lower in certain cities. But I think at $200,000 a head, which is about 16300 or something like that, 16000 something, I think, 
per month per full-time employee or full-time employee equivalent, okay? If, you, if you're working on that, and then you've got your costs at about, on average, in those big cities, I'm talking about the uh, those two markets particularly, at about $120,000 on average. So 60% of revenue, and you've got 20% for other costs, and then a 20% margin, just as a little rule of thumb, I like it. Work out what revenue for, per head is for you, and then make sure that you're monitoring on average, in this month, we did $80,000 of revenue. I've got six people, uh, I don't know what six into 80 is, but let's say it's $14,000 a head per person. And at my cost structure, that gives me the right kind of margin to be able to reinvest in the business, to have the cash flow I need and to make a fair living out of the business. That's a nice metric. And you'll be able to look at that based on the information we're telling you on staffing and revenue and all those sorts of things. Um, I, I, really good work's been done by this, in my view. Uh, and, um, clearly, I wasn't that involved in it, but I was involved in reviewing, discussing with Shane exactly what was being proposed. I like these metrics. These, there isn't a metric I use that I can think of that is, that, that is not covered in this list. I wouldn't use all 10 of these areas every day. I probably use three or four of them, but for a business on, an, on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis, these are the key metrics, the dashboard that you can use in terms of, is my, my business fit? Am I performing at the right level against like, like for like businesses? How do I compare to agencies bigger than me? How do I compare to agencies smaller than me? What is the health check for my business? They're the 10 benchmarks that we're proposing. Next slide, please. So in terms of staff titles that we'll be looking at in terms of what people are being paid, what hourly rates are being charged, what productivity levels are being set, I know that you all use a range of different titles and some have consultants and some have associates or a, everyone's got a different cut. But broadly speaking, these are the sorts of levels that we were going to look at. And it would love your feedback if this feels workable for you. It's a lot of levels, but the bigger agencies have these sort of levels. And then you can look at them if you're a smaller agency, how they apply to you uh, from a director or partner or managing director or owner to a group account director or a GAD, a senior account director, a SAD, account director and AD, a senior account manager, Sam, account manager, and I am obviously senior account executive, account executive, account coordinator. That's what we've got in our structure at the moment. Very happy to take feedback on that. Next slide, please. In terms of timeline, we've got the briefing today, which I think is not the 15th. Uh, it's, uh, I can't remember, 17th or 18th. Uh, we want to try and get feedback, get this up and running by the 30th of August, get the research done in a month. Please, I'll be coming back to all of you and saying, please, do the survey. I want to try and get a best ever survey done. So we have very, very robust information. And as Shane, I think we'll talk about in a moment, we'll also be asking those to give it to us for last year, the year before as well. So we can do a benchmark. We'll have a benchmark for the year before and for the most current year. And then in the future, we're only going to do one year, obviously, because our benchmark data bank will be building and becoming more and more robust. But we need a simpler, more relevant, more practical set of questions to add more value to you. Get it done by the 30th of September, launch it on October the 11th and get it out to you by October 11th, three or four months into the year relating to the previous year. Hopefully then you can also use it quickly in your businesses and we'll be sending out the individual reports by October 20. Next slide, please. So let me just have a look. Yes, this is me still. So the new benchmark format was going to cover these 10 benchmarks. It's going to be giving you these actionable insights. You'll get a personalized report, full detail behind all your figures. And as I said, we'll be asking for two sets of data so we can have a benchmark with these 10 new pillars immediately. And with that, I'll hand over to Shane, who will take you through the last seven or eight minutes of information. And if there are any questions at that point, we'll do our very best to answer them. Shane, over to you. 
Thanks, Chris. Um, I'll do my best uh, impersonation. Um, Melanie Vine from Lonigan Research, who was supposed to be joining us this afternoon, but unfortunately she has been taken unwell and is resting up. Um, the, what we've been working with, and Chris and the RCG Council has been working with Lonigan on, is to make the survey simpler and easier. I think Chris uh, shared the headline that we'll be cutting the number of questions for the survey by nearly two thirds. Um, but we're also uh, restructuring the survey so that it's easier for you to just plug information from your existing accounting, timekeeping and business management systems straight into the survey. So for the finance section, you'll essentially be asked to enter a, a, a range of details from your P&L. Um, and for the, tire, for the staff section, um, it's going to be a lot more easier and, and clear and transparent to work through. We're also going to be publishing the full survey. Uh, alongside a Q&A about what we're looking for for the different um, sections of the survey before it opens. Um, or, and so you'll be able to use that uh, to help prepare for that survey as well. Um, so that's really uh, going to be really exciting and hopefully make that set, the survey more accessible because we know that people in the past have been turned away just from the sheer complexity of calculating a bunch of numbers, digging up a bunch of data and then having to complete the survey. Um, if we jump onto the next slide there, uh, we've had questions in the past about privacy and making sure that your information is protected. This is obviously incredibly sensitive information about profit margins, staffing costs, salaries that you wouldn't want um, published out to the world. Uh, and Lonigan is bound by the uh, Research Society Code of Professional Behaviour and the Privacy Act, which um, imposes penalties for the misuse of personal information. So they are, there's nobody sitting there from the PIA looking at your information. Um, Chris isn't going to have access to any of that. The only people who will be looking at your information is the person uh, at Longan who checks to make sure that that information is the correct information uh, for your AD before you get sent your personalized report. Um, and so that data checking is obviously really important because we need to get you your personal report uh, for your agency and make sure that we've got your figures in there. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions about how that data is, is handled and used um, and, uh, and take that in the Q&A as well. Um, finally, in terms of preparation, uh, this year we will be, uh, if we jump through to the next slide, um, we will be looking at three segments of data, finance, staffing and clients. Um, for the financial se section, that should be a, a straight lift and shift from your P&L statement into the survey format. Um, we'll be asking for a range of expense categories and we'll give you some further information in terms of uh, what, how you fill those in um, and, and what we mean by each of those expense categories. And our aim is that we'll give you enough granular options there that you can just copy and paste again straight in from your P&L. The rest of the data is payroll and timesheet based. Um, salaries obviously from your uh, payroll, but we'll uh, also be asking for hourly rates and promotions uh, throughout the year so that we can get a sense of how many people you're promoting up through uh, each of those ranks um, and feed that into those metrics. Um, and we'll also be asking you to provide the total hours that have been worked by each band of staff member and the total um, billable hours worked for each band of staff members so we can establish some of those utility uh, measures that Chris outlined earlier. Um, and we'll also be asking for you to provide some data on client turnover. So that's probably one area where you might need to do a little bit more work to, to establish um, what has happened with your clients throughout the year and who's, who's left, who's come on board, um, and also those pitch win rates as well, because we are going to be making sure that we um, track that and report back on that in terms of the data. Um, so that's, uh, and we will be providing a, a detailed little, little sheet to help you fill this survey out. And um, the Lonigan Research team will also be available to help uh, answer any questions that you might have from, um, from, in terms of how you should answer a particular question or how you should fill out a, a particular note um, and how you should calculate any of the calculations that you do need to put into there. Um, so that's uh, the the bulk of what we had to cover today, but we were really keen to take any Q&A from, um, from you before we uh, head off. So if, 
If you do have any questions, please um, chuck them into the chat or uh, into the Q&A and um, between Chris and I, we can uh, answer them. Although Chris, it does look like uh, we've covered just about everything that anyone wanted to ask. Please, everyone, if you do have any concerns, if you feel that we're not covering information that you are specifically interested in, please write to us and let us know because we want to make sure it's as valuable as practicable, practical. And as Shane keeps saying to me, he says, it's got to be actionable, Chris. We've got to be able to, these agency leaders want information they can apply to their business in a relevant way fast. And that's what we've tried to come up with. But if you can see we've missed something, let us know. We'll do our damnedest to get us in there. If there's something in there, you think, you know what, that's not really relevant to me. Let us know too, so we can have another look at it. Thank you for your support. Thanks for renewing with the RCG. We're going to make this a super year. I'm delighted that we've got a bigger cohort than ever. And uh, hopefully with a more powerful, more valuable benchmark study, again, more and more of our industry will want to get involved and get that information because it's going to be valuable. Shane and Maddie, thank you for your help. Thank you to those other RCG leaders uh, who volunteered their time to look at that benchmark study. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Stay safe. If anyone on the call is doing it tough, please tell someone. Tell someone if you're struggling. Tell someone if you're, not, if you're worried about yourself. If you've got no one to tell, call me. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I ask for help on occasions. I'm here. Shane's here. Give us a call. These are weird times, crazy times, difficult times. And we, we can't do this alone. And you have people, you know, we, we're here, okay? And, and please ask someone because you'll get surrounded by love and support. And if, and, and if you want to speak to Shane, speak to me. Good luck, everyone. Um, hope you're doing well. Speak soon. Thank you.